questions? Hey, How you doing? So what's the latest news, Ken? <laughs> what's the latest news? Mm -hmm. About what? I don't know. How since? I haven't seen you for ages. Yeah. <laughs> for Paul, the impact of fetal alcohol syndrome has been especially severe in developing relationships with others. Um, when I first came into Trudy, I was diagnosed as a uh, major depression. And they tried to diagnose me with schizoaffective, which is totally not, you know, probably because back then I displayed those kind of behaviors, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, and also I read in my one of those uh, little, what do we call it, things, where it said I was like, magical thinking. Mm -hmm. That's true, you know. But I just don't believe in puffing magic dragon. Sorry, kids, it doesn't exist. While Paul's problems are not as severe as, let's say, Christie's, he still has certain issues. Impulsivity. Um, my budgeting skills suck. Um, also, emotional kind of problems, such as anger. And yet, Paul is on the whole a pretty smart guy. He enjoys programming computers and maintains a website. He could represent the middle of the spectrum of fetal alcohol syndrome. So this is, this is really just the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole variety of behavioral lack of inhibition, behavioral inhibition. You, you do whatever you want to do because you don't know what's right or what's wrong and you can't distinguish. Um, and, you know, when they start to grow up, inappropriate sexual behavior and so on. So there's a whole series, including the the probability, the higher probability that they were themselves drink. And that could very well describe the life story of Kevin, born weighing just five pounds and two ounces in 1980. Kevin's story is told by his birth mother, Kathy. The reason that he was so tiny is that my doctor said it was okay that I drink beer and wine in moderation while I was pregnant. Back then I had a drinking problem. I mean, I loved to drink. I was young. And so I did. And my idea of moderation and the doctors were different. And when the baby was born so small, other reasons were given. I know my mom was with me when I, when I had my son, and, and she kept asking the doctor, why is he so small? And the doctor said, cigarettes, smoking cigarettes. That's why the baby's so small. Um, later on, I learned that it was because of my drinking. At first, it didn't seem that evident that alcohol was at the root of Kevin's problems. He was hyperactive, and at first he was diagnosed with ADD. But as Kevin grew older, more problems emerged. Drug and alcohol abuse, attempted suicide, depression, and worse. Today, our son is serving a life sentence uh, in prison for a second degree murder. Kathy holds out hope that she will still be alive when her son is paroled from prison. One of our more concerning um, statistics is that 12 to 14 percent of pregnant women continue to drink throughout pregnancy. And that's a number that we've seen fairly consistently over the past decade to two decades. That number has been fairly consistent and so we really need to step up our prevention activities to, to try and make a dent and bring down that percentage of women who continue to drink during pregnancy. These are the people we have to um, get our message to. However, among middle class and upper middle class people, there still is drinking going on. 